All right, now for the fun part. At this stage, you should have your three textures rendered out. We'll also need to export a preview mesh that will load into our 3D viewer. Just select your grenade and go to the ribbon, choose Export Selected. Export it as an OBJ, and I recommend keeping it in the same folder as your bake textures. When the OBJ export options pop up, make sure to change faces to triangles here so that it's compatible with the DDU viewport. Also, double check that the texture coordinates, normals, and smoothing groups are all checked, and then hit export. We'll be using the Quixel suite to create some realistic materials from our baked textures. Visit quixel.se to download a trial version or purchase the suite. There are many other programs that are very useful like Substance Painter and 3D Coat, so make sure to try each of them before committing to a purchase. The strength of the Quixel suite is that it comes with a very robust library of physically based materials and presets. The whole suite is essentially a plugin for Photoshop, so once you download it, open Photoshop and then launch the suite. For this demo, we'll be using DDU, so click the orange D icon to launch it. The base creator should open up, and this is where you load in your mesh and bake textures. Just click each button and direct it to your files. The ID map is basically our flat diffuse colors that we prepared. This is the texture we'll use to mask off the different materials. Normal map is obvious, and the AO, or ambient occlusion, is our lighting map. Now towards the bottom, set your calibration profile to whichever engine you're going to author it for. First I'll try Unreal 4, and later I'll export out a CryEngine version. Now, when exporting normals from Max, you'll want to check Flip Normal Y, otherwise it'll interpret the green channel of your normal map inverted. OK, now we can just hit Create Base to start our project file. Next, press this blue 3 button here to launch 3Do. This is the real-time 3D viewport I mentioned earlier, and it gives a good approximation of how the materials will look in a game engine. Just left click and drag to rotate, shift left click to rotate the lighting, and drag right click to zoom in and out. Spacebar toggles the UI, and you can try out different panoramic images to use as your light source. This is using image based reflections, so the smoother or glossier the surface, the more reflections will come through. I'll use the second image to start with. I also have spin disabled here because I find it distracting when I'm trying to dial in a material. Now let's open up our original reference so that we can really try and match the material's behavior. This menu here is the main interface for our materials. Think of it as a layers tab for all our different materials and textures. Notice the top tab represents all the different textures that make up the material. To start, let's add our first smart material using this button on the bottom. This is the material library I mentioned earlier. These are based on actual scans of real world materials to ensure that they light properly when used in a physical based shading model. To try out a material, just select it and hit the Create button. By default, it will cover your entire mesh, but we'll start masking them once we add the green shell plastic. The first material I tried was dull aluminum, and it looked a little too clean and, well, uh, dull. I like the dull steel material here a little more, but we might as well try out a few more before committing. Okay, I think the stained steel has some nice dirt and rust effects, so I'll use this one. Now let's delete the smart materials that we don't want anymore by selecting the layer and clicking the trash can at the bottom. We can enter this material group to fine tune some of the parameters. Notice we're doing this under the albedo tab, meaning this just re represents the diffuse color void of any lighting influences. I'll try and brighten up the dirt layers a bit, get a little more of the reddish brown that's visible in the reference. All right, that's a subtle change, but I like it. I think it's getting really close. We can use this back arrow here to get to the top of our project, and then we can add another smart material. Now, I'm not sure exactly what material the grenade shell is, but it looks like a hard acrylic plastic. I'm going to try the acrylic white material under the paint category. Okay, now that we have two materials, we'll want to start assigning our masks. You can do this by right-clicking the gray mask thumbnail here, and then you can use right-click to pan around your image mouse wheel to zoom in, and left click to select your actual mask color. All right, now everything we do within this material will only apply within the mask. This is why we went through the trouble of assigning the flat diffuse colors to our high poly and then baking them down to a diffuse. All right, this looks promising. So let's enter this material group and change the paint color here. The cool thing is we can actually color sample directly from our reference image. This looks close, but maybe we should sample a darker value. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add another acrylic white material for the yellow stripe on top of the neck. 
Remember, just right click the mask, select the color. Next, we enter the material and sample the color. Now, it might be cool if we add some thickness to the yellow paint. We can achieve this by switching over to our bump tab and brightening the value here. The closer to white, the more the material will raise in the normal map. We also need to raise the opacity on this channel since it's defaulted to zero. Okay, that might be a little thick, so let's lower the value slightly. Okay, that's better. Now all I need is the little red rubber insert. Again, pick the material, set the mask, enter the material to adjust the color, and make sure you switch back to the albedo tab, otherwise your color changes won't register correctly. Okay, that looks pretty close to the original, so great job. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. Now let's bring up our viewer settings again and check it out under the different lighting presets. One of the main advantages of this workflow is you get convincing materials that look good in a variety of light conditions. Before we export these out, we should save the project in case we need to come back and tweak any of these materials. Just go to the top right dropdown and choose Save Project. It will automatically save an XML in the, in the same directory as your textures. Next, open up the exporter here. Click the Set Path button to point the export to the correct folder. Then double check the calibration profile. Again, this makes sure it exports the correct textures for the game engine you're using. Then we'll hit Export and we're good to go. Let's close all this clutter and then reopen our exported textures. Okay, looks like everything came through correctly. Before we export, we should open up Unreal though and start a new project. I'll just test mine out with the blank scene and name it Grenade Demo. Now I'll hop back into Max, select my file and export FBX and copy the folder with the textures and FBX over to the new project. Unreal will automatically import textures, but when it detects a new FBX, it will prompt you with import options. This is handy if you need to change your scale or transform information. The defaults are fine, so I'll just import all. Now we can right click down in our content browser and choose material under create basic asset. I'll rename it and then double click to open it up in the material editor. This editor is very similar to the old UDK material editor. To add textures, you can switch tabs back to your main scene and select them in the browser, then jump back to the material editor, and while holding the T key, click the workspace. Sometimes it'll take two clicks to work correctly. Once your texture sample shows up, plug it into the appropriate input. Since this is the albedo map, I'll plug the RGB channel node into base color. The output nodes in order are RGB channel, red, green, blue, and alpha, from top to bottom. So in some cases you might have a mask in the alpha channel or for more complex materials you might store different grayscale textures in individual color channels. For this material we'll keep it simple however. Another useful shortcut is holding the one key while clicking in the workspace. This adds a vector one input that you can use for numeric values. For instance, to better understand how the roughness map works, we can start with a roughness of zero meaning the surface is perfectly smooth. Notice how the environment reflections come through very clear. This is essentially the same as the gloss map in CryEngine, only the values are inverted. If we change this to 1, then we get a completely rough surface. Now let's bring over our actual rough map and plug it in. Remember, just select it in the browser, hold T, and click the workspace. Then plug it in. Now let's also add the normal map and hook it up. Notice how important the normal map is. This really should emphasize the value of a nice high poly model and a clean bake. Now let's add our metallic map so that we know how to handle the metal areas. Okay, when you're done hooking up the textures, click this apply button to save your material. Now let's drag the FBX model on the scene. You might want to turn off these snap options for smoother placement. Okay, now double click the FBX model to bring up the mesh options. Now we can change this object's default material by clicking here and finding the grenade MTL we created. This viewport also shows off the assets very well. Okay, once the material is connected you can jump back to your scene tab and check it out in the map. You might as well scale it up a little bit and see it in its full glory. Alright, I hope this tutorial has been helpful and I look forward to seeing what you all come up with. Also, make sure to reference the CryEngine variant of this chapter to see the export process and compare the results. Thanks, everybody.